I've done my best and I begin to see what is meant by the joy of strife. Next to trying and winning is trying and failing. A quote by Lucy Maud Montgomery. And in short, I'm not exactly sure how you guys take that, but when you say the joy of strife, you're basically trying to find the good in the bad. Uh, and we always say, you know, winning is great, but losing is actually where you learn, right? And so most people will take a loss as a failure, yeah, as something negative, as a setback. When I myself, I look at a failure as a risk that I took, um, a lesson that I've learned, I now know what not to do because of it, and I am now better because of that failure or that loss. So try not to look at a failure or a loss as a setback, but rather as a, a lesson learned and a step forward because you now know what not to do. You never would have known what not to do if you didn't take that chance and if you didn't have that, that failure. So I hope that one hits home with you guys today. It's Wednesday, it's midweek check-ins, and man, I'm fired up today because I've been hitting that cardio, I've cut my calories down a little bit, feeling a little bit tighter. Um, I know for most of you guys, thank you so much for checking in with me uh, on Monday. For those of you who have not, whether you're on your game or not, please just get back to me. Let me know how you guys are doing. Again, it's all about that communication. If you remember from our previous uh, video, communication is everything and I love talking to you guys. I love hearing from you guys, okay? So just to take a quick step back and review from Monday, I had one challenge for you guys this week and it was to log your meals. So I'm gonna be checking in with you guys. Are you on your MyFitnessPal? Are you on your Diet Master Pro? How are you logging your food? If I was to shoot you a message right now and ask you how many calories have you eaten on average between Monday and Tuesday, if you add both of those days up, add those two up, divide by two, that gives you your average calorie intake. I would love to know that you know your average calorie intake so far this week because that just goes to show me that you're trying something new, that you are taking a risk, uh, that you are stepping outside the comfort zone to make those daily efforts to guarantee success. And that's really what I want for you guys. So I'll check in with you guys soon to see how we're doing on our logs. But today's topic is the importance of an active rest day. First question is, do we even know what an active rest day is? If you're watching this, then I hope so because you're my client and we've gone over it before and it's actually implemented into your weekly regimen. Most people overlook an off day or an active rest day and they think, oh, I worked out yesterday, the day before, I'm sore, so I'm going to take today off. What does that usually mean to you? Day off usually probably means I'm not going to the gym. I'm not putting on workout clothes. I'm not sweating. I'm not stretching. I'm not going to be taking deep breaths. I am off, right? Well, in this program, the goal is to see results as quickly as possible, okay? I want you to see the transformation. I want you to feel the transformation each and every day. And so if you guys want to bring your best each and every day, you need to make that time to connect to your body, connect to your health, connect to your breathing, expand those lungs outside of your normal day-to-day -day breathing patterns, okay? Raise those endorphin levels, get those hormones going all over the place, get the sweat going, stretch and increase range of motion and bring about life in your body on your active rest days, okay? So there's a few different topics uh, that I wanted to discuss in regards to active rest. Number one is, what is it? What is an active rest day? And in short, it's a regimen just like a resistance training day, okay? So for example, I'll give you a quick little brief rundown of what your active rest day should look like. You walk into the gym, you hop on your choice of cardio, 
could be stair climber, treadmill, bike, whatever it may be. Hop on for 10 minutes at a moderate pace just to get the blood flowing and get nice and warmed up. All right. As soon as you hop off cardio, you go ahead right over to your foam roller and you spend 10 minutes, maybe even 15 minutes, uh, rolling out any tight areas. Because this is an active rest day, I actually put more emphasis and more time into my foam rolling and do full body because the goal is to get rid of all those kinks and all the stresses and all the toxins in the tissues to increase mobility, range of motion, and neurological uh, reception. Right? We want our mind connecting to our toes. And if you have kinks and aches and stresses, chances are those neurons are getting kinked somewhere along the way and we're not having 100% communication uh, amongst all limbs. So make sure you spend a little bit more time on your foam rolls on your active rest days. Uh, after foam roll, then we go into our nice full dynamic warm up. This could be a static warm up where you're standing in one place. This could be a dynamic warm up where you're moving back and forth, left and right. It could be a plyometric warm up where you're focusing more on jumping jacks and seal jacks and flings. Um, in your six week program that you have, you should have a video of foam rolling for every area on the body. You should have a full dynamic warm up. You even have a full cardio video for you guys. So make sure you, you log back into your six week strength programs. Take a look at your active rest day and make sure you guys take, take priority in, in uh, your active rest day because I don't think enough of us put um, enough emphasis on the importance of an active rest day. Why do we need an active rest day? People tend to think that the more I do, the harder I go, the less I rest, the faster I'm gonna get there, right? People always think that more is better. And over the last 20 years, what I've accumulated is it's not about doing more, it's about doing just enough to push your body to that breaking point and then allow it to recover, rest, refuel, recharge, get that mind and body refocused because it's really hard to fill back up that gas tank if you're just driving all the time. At some point, you have to stop at the gas station and fill that tank back up. And so we need an active rest day because we get so much inflammation through the joints. We tear those muscle fibers because we're training so hard. So many nutrients and water are being transported to those damaged areas. And it's very difficult for us to refuel and recharge and recover um, if we're not ever stopping at the gas station. And so make sure that with your training splits, you know roughly how many days can I go in a row before I'm just starting to feel taxed. Uh, it could be two days and then a rest. It could be three days and then a rest. Maybe you're going on a trip this weekend and you know you're gonna have to take a day off from the gym on the weekend step it up and, and get one extra resistance training day in earlier in the week and when you're on your trip go for a walk spend 20 minutes just getting the blood flowing uh, and stretch out a little bit and then get on with your day okay but we need active rest days because we need to refill the tank all right uh, for example i'm on a two-day training split right now so i only have two different workouts that i do before I have to repeat. So I go upper body, lower body, rest. Upper body, lower body, rest. Today is my active rest day. So I'm planning on doing a full 45 minutes of cardio, 15 to 20 minutes on the foam roller, um, some nice deep passive stretches to just lengthen out the tissue because I'm so sore from yesterday's leg day. Um, and then maybe some abs depending on how I'm feeling and I'm done. 60 minutes, a nice full active rest day. I know I'm gonna be feeling amazing when I'm done, and I know it's also going to allow me to perform even better tomorrow for my upper body day. And I know that's what you guys want, is to continue performing, looking, and feeling better day after day, right? So that's why we need an active rest day. Uh, what are the benefits of an active rest day? We've kind of already explained a few, but what I've noticed most with my active rest days is it makes me feel like I'm getting better, like I'm getting closer to my goals. 
An active rest day is a day just like any other. All right, so your eating, your hydration, your vitamin and supplementation, and the time that you focus into your exercise is just as important on an active rest day, if not more important, because this allows us to get back in and perform even better tomorrow. So we get to mentally take a break from the weights, we get to physically take a break from the weights, but we're also still getting closer to the goals. And that is ultimately my goal for you, is I want you to get closer to your goals seven days a week, all right? Our, our bodies don't take a day off. Our mind doesn't take a day off, all right? We have to eat every single day of the week. We either get calories in or we don't, we either burn calories or we don't. So seven days a week, you're either getting closer or further from your goals. And I wanna make sure that you are set up for success seven days a week and know how to listen to your body and make adjustments to your weekly training split and throwing in one to two active rest days in a row based on how your body is feeling. So I wanna make sure that you guys are listening to what your body is saying. If you're hurting, if you're stiff, if you're tight, achy, sore, that's the priority at the moment. If you look past it and you just try to push through it, that's usually when something tends to snap, pop, or you end up waking up the next morning and you can't even turn your neck because maybe you end up you know, pulling a muscle in your neck because you tried to shrug too hard even though you were already feeling tense in your shoulders, right? I think we've all done that before. So uh, lastly, how to work the active rest days into your splits. So again, I kind of explained it already, but each of us are on a slightly different program. And the very first thing is listen to your body. So if you feel like you've been going hard and you just feel a little swollen or a little stiff, and a little sore, take an active rest day. It's okay. Just because you live today doesn't mean you're gonna get bigger tomorrow. You actually get bigger while you sleep and while you repair, okay? So if you are on a six day training split and you have six different workouts to get done in one week, I recommend that you take your active rest day right in the middle of the week. So go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, hard. Thursday is a full active rest day. Then you come back on Friday hungry and ready to go. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, hard again, right? But then this rotation split or this split rotates. And so a rotational split, you don't have the same body part or the same workout on the same day every week. It kind of rotates. So if you're gonna go on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, off Thursday, then you go on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but now you're off on Monday, right? And then you go on on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, off on Friday, and then back on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then you're off on Tuesday, so on and so forth. So over a four to six week period, your, your split is rotating and uh, also based on your activities. Like I said earlier, if you're going on a vacation or if you're going out of town, plan those active rest days when you know you're not going to be able to get to the gym and push workouts up or push workouts back to make sure that you stay right on track. So in a nutshell, that is active rest. I hope you guys took a little something today from our tips, tricks, and secrets. Uh, have a great day, and make sure you're logging. I'm going to come check on you guys. Have a good day. I love you.